Hello there everyone. So today and tomorrow is going to take quite a while to get this done, but a friend of mine went hunting and got a bear. So got to pick up the bear hide and it stayed frozen for a while. This is the first part of November, so it's a little bit past hunting season. So it took us a while to get up there to to pick it up. However, now that it's been frozen and sticking it in some warm water, not hot water, so you don't want the hair to slip. Um, just soaking it, letting it thaw out the rest of the way. Then I'm going to be taking the hide off the skull. The skull is still attached, the, the claws are still attached. And uh, so I'll be removing all of those, using those for other things. And then uh, I'll start fleshing them out and getting them all cleaned up and washed. So this is the first video on the process. Sorry guys, you can't see him. He's, he's, uh, he's bottoms up, I guess. <laughs> this is his tail. So, um, yeah, this is the start of this video. Hi there, everyone. So uh, we're going to flush out the bear hide today. So he's still really, really dirty. So we're going to wash him and get him all cleaned up. Um, he does have a good size hole in him right there in the hide. So we're going to do our best to doctor that up. If I can sew it back, I will. If not, then I'll just make do with the best I can. Um, sorry I couldn't film the taking the claws and the, the head off, but I'm sure from the last video you guys kind of got the idea. So bears are extremely greasy. So you really want to make sure you wash the hide really, really, really well because all that grease and stuff that's in the hide will um, will rot the hide. So you have to make sure you get it all out. Alright, so got my hose, a little bit of water. I'm gonna start here, I guess. Yep, so all of this stuff, all of it has to has to come off. There, I think you can see that lovely hole right there. So I'm gonna see what I can do about that. It's got some bruising going on with the hide as well. So we'll we'll do the best we can to get rid of all that. So I'm going to gently if I can. Put a little bit of water on the hide and make, make it easy for the meat to um, get real soft so it'll slide off the hide without cutting it and putting more holes in it. This one I am definitely going to need to sew. That's a, there's a couple good holes in them still. So I want to make sure all that stuff gets out of there. Yeah, I'm going to need to sew that. I'm going to get started. Now remember, as I showed you before, take your blade, and if you bend it like this, scrape pull towards you, and just sweep in this motion. You'll get all that flesh off. So, it's going to get it started here. I don't want to cut so deep that I get into the hair follicles because that will make it so that the hair slips and we don't want hair slippage. So this is this is the starting process. I don't know if you can, if my hands are even in the frame here, so I'll just move it over a little bit. As always, these animals give their life, so we need to show the animal respect, pray for it, and hope that one day that the food it provides families also then have us return to the dirt to feed them. It's a circle of life. 
So I'm discovering that I am having a dickens of a time telling what is fat and what is skin. So I am having a hard time using this method to pull it. I don't know if part of that has to do with the fact that it was frozen and we thought it out or what exactly. So this is going to have a little bit more holes in it, I think. I'm really sad about that, but you know, you do the best you can. Um, there's skin, there's membrane, so it's really, really hard to tell, even if you pull it like this. It's, it's difficult, so um, I found I'm going to have to pinch up like that, find a spot where it's a little bit see-through, poke a hole, and just kind of guide it with my fingers, like this, and just kind of tilt my blade upwards. I'm finding I'm having a little bit better luck with that and not cutting the hide that way. So there it is. So um, that's what I had to change, this one. So a lot of this is still going to have quite a bit of flesh on it or membrane on it. And uh, as it dries, I'll be able to... See, that's so hard to see. I'll be able to better tell what's the membrane, what isn't, as it's drying, because it will be kind of raggedy that way. This is kind of a big piece. So, um, this hide we're definitely going to need to sand just to get it as cleaned up in some areas as possible. Just starting to mend that hole. Just got him most of the way washed. I don't have my leather tools with me and I really wish I'd brought them. But um, use what you got. I did not know he was going to have such a large hole in him. I'm trying not to get any hair in the stitches so that way the stitches stay hidden on the hide side or the hair side. There we go. This hole right here, it already made. Get the hair out of the way. Come up underneath of it, make sure no hair got in there. All right, that seems good. Another hole right there. Sorry, kids are just getting out of school. I'm gonna go right back through that hole I've already made. Right there. Make sure no hair is getting caught in those threads. I'll check the other side. And it goes tighter. Hopefully when I brush them out, I can fix that a little bit better. So I just finished my suture job right here. I left my ends because I want to be able to find those later on and uh, maybe do a better repair job. But if I flip it back over, unless you really, really look hard, you can't see the suture job. So um, at least there's something to be said about animals with long hair. So I'm going to finish washing them out. And uh, one of the cool things about hides, and I didn't show this in the last video, but um, move around here for you. When you wash your hide, to know if it's really clean, all you have to do is, is do a squeegee or something like that on there. And uh, you get dirt up over your finger, like dirty water, then you know you still need to clean it more. But I'm getting nice, clean, clean water. So I did a pretty darn good job. So um, here I've got a little bit of 
that yellow dirt popping up, so I'm going to need to wash that area a little bit more. But uh, that's how you know if your hide's really good and clean or not. So I'm going to get back washing and brushing, and then I'll start doing the tacking of it and putting borax on. Now to set them out on the board. Pull them up this way. Put all the hair leaves the right direction. than my board. <laughs> kind of about like that deer, I guess. Not too bad a thing, don't think. And there's that. Alrighty. Now to cover him in borax and nail him. <laughs> Gotta move this around. Still pretty wet, but uh, I didn't flush them out as great as I would have liked to, but this will do for now. So the salt you want to use is unidized. I don't know if I mentioned that before. So make sure you have that handy and it brings something to punch that in. <laughs> Alrighty then, we're just going to open the box, I think. This guy's probably going to use both boxes. It's still pretty wet. Alright. Oh yeah, he's definitely going to use both boxes. helps cut down the smell and if there's any bacteria that wants to try and grow this will help keep that from happening we don't want that we want to pack that all in there in the hide I can already smell a distinct difference Let's get to work. Pack in all those spots. And after I get them completely coated, just on the flesh side, then I'll get to nailing them. All right, I've just finished nailing all my nails I started down there went to here nailed down some more and just did this kind of a pattern all over it till I got all the nails in I put a lot of nails up here because a lot of the weight is going to be hung on this area so as it slides down I'm hoping you know I don't lose any nails or anything else so but this worked out so much better since the hide was very wet this time when uh, nailed it, so that made it so it didn't pucker anywhere. So if you can, try and um, try and make sure that you have your hide really good and wet. And uh, that's it. So I'll be finishing this up and putting it up for the night where it will dry for a few days. And then once it's dry, I'll take all the borax and all that stuff off because I'll have to do that anyway. Take the borax, take the salt off, 
dust it on. Now when you do apply the borax and salt, you want to rub it into the hide. You don't want to brush it on with a brush. So you do want it caked into the hide to make sure that it will dry properly. So we just got the bear hide just pulled out of the shed. It's now finally spring. So next step, if we make sure it's all dry, is to get all that salt and borax off of the hide. And then we'll be taking those nails out and removing it and checking our work. We'll get to see what it looks like. Over, see what we've got. Oh, I didn't. I guess. There's still one there. <laughs> My, do these things like to hide. No pun intended. All right, here we go. Let's try that again, shall we? Do I have another nail? I do have another nail. Okay. Me and a goof again. There it is, found it. All righty. Now let's try this again, shall we? As soon as I get that all pulled out, these were really tough, actually. All right, let's check it. It's all moving, all right. <laughs> I am really happy with that. Hello everyone, welcome back. So it has been a year since we last finished this bear hide and I wanted to show you guys how well it turned out. It is just held up beautiful. Now the thing was with bear hides is I guess you're not supposed to freeze them and unfortunately this one did. So there were a lot of issues trying to make sure to get this hide preserved and to keep its hair and look as it's turned out now. I was told it was probably impossible, but hey, if I can do it with a filleting knife and some basic tools, then you can too. So uh, here's what I did. On the inside of the hide, made sure to wash it really, really well. Got all the salt, all the borax back out of the hide, or the flesh side, and tried to get it as clean as possible. I don't think I would oil this one because bear hides are really, really greasy. They produce a high fat in their bodies. So um, <laughs> it's up to you if you want to oil the hide or not. That's your choice. I chose not to do it. Um, what I ended up doing for the hair is I sprayed it down with a lot of vinegar, brushed it really, really good, and that got all of the grease out of the hair side and produce this nice shiny luster to it. It is really soft, it is really pliable, and again, I've had to work it quite a bit to make sure it got this way. So you are gonna have to handle your hides a lot to make sure that they do get soft. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you guys how well it actually turned out. I am really pleased with it, and uh, if you like this video, you can come back for more tips and tricks later on. Bye now.